In today's aviation news recap, there's coverage on Boeing 737s being upgraded to be more efficient and have more range, some developments following an Atlas Air Boeing 747 engine fire, and a Chinese airline expanding for a busy travel period. Let's begin with that engine fire. On January 18th, 2024, an Atlas Air Boeing 7478F was operating on a routine flight from Miami International to Puerto Rico. At least this is what it was meant to do. However, very shortly after departure aboard flight 3885, investigators say that the pilots in the cockpit received a warning signal about a fire coming from engine number 2. Flight data indicates that the warning light lit up during the climb out, thus only resulting in the 7478 crossing 3,000 feet. A fire bell sound quickly followed this, however to their credit, the crew promptly addressed the situation by shutting down the number 2 engine. Imagery and videos from the ground highlighted the engine visibly facing difficulties, however the 747-8F with Atlas Air would make a safe return to Miami thankfully. Following the incident, the NTSB launched a thorough investigation per very standard procedures. Less than now a month after the incident, the NTSB has released its preliminary inspection into the incident to identify better what unfolded and the history of inspections around this aircraft and engine. An inspection following the incident was immediately conducted to the General Electric GENX 2B67s, which power the Atlas Air 74. The investigation revealed a burn through of the thrust reverser fan duct fixed in a wall. Additionally, the engine cases were reportedly intact, thus, there was no evidence of an uncontained engine failure. However, interestingly, the NTSB says in their preliminary report, which can be found on their newsroom, that the combustor diffuser nozzle case, port M bore scope plug, was not secured in the case, and thus found loose in the engine cowling. The NTSB further says that the finding of a loose part actually follows inspections conducted only four days prior. This occurred on January 14th, 2024, and was done by an unnamed at this stage third-party vendor. The person handling the maintenance labelled this work as completed. This preliminary report gives us a bit of a rough outline of what occurred and the circumstances about how they found a loose part which stemmed from inspections, but will need to be waiting a little longer, likely over a year, until the final report is revealed. You can let me know your thoughts on that down below in the comments, but let's move on to the next topic. Qantas has announced that it will be adding split scimitar winglets to 23 of its 737-800s that are currently in service. The work will be conducted at its key maintenance facility in Brisbane, Queensland. Qantas says that adding the new split scimitar winglets will increase the efficiency of their 737-800s, which are beginning to show signs of age. Carbon emissions will also be reduced and the range of the aircraft will be increased to see more significant fuel benefits overall. Ultimately, efficiency should improve by 2%, primarily achieved by implementing those new winglets by reducing air drag. The Australian flag carrier described air drag as forming behind the aircraft. Qantas really explains it as when the current 737s are airborne with the current winglets, they see airflow over the top and bottom of the wing, which creates a long spiral forming behind the tip of the wing, like a vortex. This drag is generally labelled as not ideal, and Qantas adds it does actually put additional resistance on the aircraft, which means more power is required to counter the feeling, and therefore more fuel is burned. Qantas says it is currently being very selective with the aircraft it'll be adding these split scimitar winglets on. It does fly more than 23 737-800s, but it's only selecting this amount to begin with. The selective nature means the primary focus will be on implementing the split scimitar winglets on aircraft departing for some international destinations. Qantas cites locations such as Bali and Fiji as examples. However, some focus will be placed on 737s chosen for domestic routes, which will also see improvements across its broader network. The Qantas Group is undoubtedly entering a new era concerning its fleet, which started with a significant aircraft order. 
However, at the back end of 2023, that new era, you could say, was formally realized, with the group welcoming its first Airbus A220, a crucial part of the jigsaw to replace the aging 717s and become again more efficient. Despite several new aircraft types, yes, slated to join the fleet in the coming decade, thus not only significantly dropping the average age, but also bringing greater efficiency, Qantas still believes it's important to focus on the existing network it has. Enhancing the operational efficiency of the current fleet is essential to long-term success in the market. It is described as one of the many initiatives being implemented to become more sustainable. In today's final story, we see China Eastern, who have announced expansion of their network in preparation and to counter the massive 2024 Spring Festival rush. The move is part of its efforts to open and also resume more international routes. The carrier says it'll look to increase its Southeast Asian island destination routes to help meet travel demand. Specifically, this will occur again during that travel rush. The company expects that these additional flights will result in more passengers and as a direct result of this, more people will travel through China during the 40-day festival. 2,322 round-trip flights will be operated between domestic airports in China and critical locations such as Singapore, Kuala Lumpur and Bangkok. But don't worry, I'll be getting into the specifics now. China Eastern says it'll open up new service between three cities in China to Kuala Lumpur. Meanwhile, four routes are already operational to Kuala Lumpur, in total we see 340 round trips, and the four current routes include the likes of Shanghai and Beijing. The airline further adds that operations towards Australia will see five destinations, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth are in operation, and for a limited period at the beginning of February, we saw Cairns back, with this being the ninth route technically if we're looking between China and Australia, this was purely seasonal and operated four times a week. Singapore has eight routes with China Eastern, meanwhile Thailand has direct connections to Chengdu and Shanghai, among others. The flights, however, will be increased to 66 per day, a staggering amount during the Spring Festival travel rush. This is one of the most important periods of the year, and when you really see just how bleak the last couple of years were during the global pandemic for your airlines based in China, it becomes very much clear how important it is to respond to this demand and to truly get it all right. That is going to conclude today's aviation news recap. If you have absolutely any thoughts, well, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. I really do appreciate your support here on the channel. As always, I love bringing these videos to you and I love that you tune in and watch them. Stay tuned, same place, same time tomorrow where you'll be able to see your latest industry developments once more. Take care, like I said, be safe and I'll see you then. And we'll fly.